In this video, I am going through all the poppin' fresh hot new rumors about the iPhone 14, iPhone SE 3 and 4, and iPhone Fold Alpha. Quick thanks to CuriosityStream with Nebula for sponsoring, where I just kicked off my brand new exclusive studio tour series. Now, let's go. All of this info comes from Dylan DKT on Twitter. I am able to corroborate information regarding a hole punch camera for the pro model of the iPhone 14. And in response to a question, he says that that hole cut will be not round, not circular, but pill shaped, so oblong. And there's a couple reasons why it might be a pill punch and not a hole punch. One could be if there is a sensor that needs room next to the camera that can't go under the display. Another could just be that the camera, the wide angledness of the camera is wide enough that a standard round hole punch would get within that field of vision. And as to putting the IR components, because most of Face ID is infrared based, because you actually don't need the same kind of visual acuity as you would for a traditional RGB, red, green, blue, a traditional selfie camera. And given that it'll make a dramatic difference to the front facing design aesthetic of the phone, as a next generation move by Apple, it just absolutely makes the kind of sense that does. Next up, foldables. And what Dylan says here is, for those who are curious about a foldable iPhone, Apple is definitely working and testing multiple prototypes that contain foldable displays. Too many compromises still exist with foldable display technology though. I've been hearing about Apple testing foldables or hingeables back then since the era of the iPhone 4S back in like 2011. And more recently over the last few years, the same type of foldable OLED, a flexible OLED technology. It's just their version of the Galaxy Fold 1, Fold 2, Fold 3, the Galaxy Flip, all of those are internal. They're in the labs. They don't put those out externally. And you know, that means that those of us who'd want to use those products, would want to be part of the experiment, don't get to do that. But to Apple, it means they're not putting the burden of beta testing these devices onto consumers. And Apple's also been using foldable OLED for a long time. Almost every Apple display, uh, with the exception of one, has been a flexible OLED display. And that is, for example, in the iPhone so that they could bend it backwards underneath the display into the driver so that they wouldn't have to have as large a chin as other vendors did for many, many years afterwards. But in Apple's tests, the foldable displays in production units just weren't there. Like the, the term I kept hearing was, or the term I keep hearing, is they're just not ready for prime time. You know, they've graduated a little bit. They've gone from preschool to kindergarten and now like elementary school, but they're nowhere ready to graduate yet into what Apple considers to be a viable consumer product. And that's just across an array of factors. For example, they're getting better at liquid ingress protection, water resistance, but not at dust protection at all yet. And there's still you know, a very visible crease and the rating for how many times they fold without issue, what companies say and what people have been seeing in the real world can sometimes be very different. And then there's also issues of just the availability of those panels. Apple sells so many phones. We saw this with the 120 Hertz ProMotion technology. Samsung was able to fabricate enough of those panels for their requirements for the Galaxy Note back in 2020, but they just couldn't meet Apple's demands uh, for iPhone displays for LTPO iPhone displays until 2022. And even then only for the pro models, there is still just LTPO OLED is still heavily constrained. And as you can imagine, flexible OLED only more so. Dylan goes on to say, there are also concerns as to whether foldable smartphones will continue to have a place in the market or fall into obsolescence. And that's just a, you know, a key difference between crazy cousin Samsung, who's willing to throw enormous amounts of spaghetti at the wall to see which individual noodles stick and then just keep going with those. Conservative cousin Apple uh, just wants to take very, very few shots. You know, they're, they're more a sniper rifle, less of shotgun. And they're happy to let Samsung and other companies sort of explore these in the public so they can see the reaction. They can learn from both positive and negative consumer responses and use that to inform their own product development, but also see what problems still remain, what questions haven't been answered and in hopefully figure out a solution on their end that it generally involves packaging, how to make these technologies way more accessible and acceptable to mainstream consumers. I mean, that's what they did with smartphones to begin with and tablets and watches. And it seems super likely that that's exactly what they're doing right now with foldables. iPhone SE, which Dylan originally said the next generation version would feature a touch ID sensor that would be embedded into the power button similar to the newest iPad Air and the design of the phone would be similar to the iPhone 11, 
but with a smaller display size. And that's sort of what, like, what I've won. I think what a lot of people, except for people who really, really love the home button, people who are super attached, like you will pry that home button from their cold, dead, literal hand, iPhone 8 stalwarts really want is that next generation modern design iPhone SE. But Dylan says, update to this tweet, the iPhone SE with a similar design to the iPhone XR and 11 with a slightly smaller screen size has been pushed back to an expected release date of 2024. And this is pretty much exactly what I mentioned in my uh, 2022 iPhone roadmap video, which I'll drop a link to in the description right below the like button. That would let Apple iterate on the iPhone SE lineup more quickly with what I'm guessing is the uh, Qualcomm X60 modem and A15 chipset from the iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 that was released just last September. I do have some concerns about battery life given what we saw in the 2020 iPhone SE, but hopefully Apple is handling that with an improvement to both the efficiency of the modem, of the chipset, and maybe an increase in battery size, which is what they did with the iPhone 13. So like all the capacitive input fingers crossed on that. But you know, not, not surprising at all, all of this sounds pretty much exactly as expected to me, which is exactly the reason why I wanted to do this whole entire video basically live to drive to begin with. And to find out how and how I do all of my videos, I started dropping a whole new series called Studio Tour. It's gonna cover all the gear I use, starting with the cameras for A-roll, B-roll, top-down, over the shoulder, from tripods to cameras to cards to readers. And, and you can watch it right now exclusively on Nebula, along with all my other videos, ad-free, sponsor-free, often with extended and bonus content, bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Richie, or click the link below. And right now, because you're watching this video, you can get Curiosity Stream for 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, less than the price of an iPhone dongle for a whole entire year. And that includes all their thousands of amazing documentaries and series like Top Science Stories for 2021, which brings you all the amazing news-breaking advances of the last year, from a prehistoric nursery to a medical treatment breakthrough, basically an exclusive hyper tour from Earth to space. It is without question the best way to support educational creators directly and the best damn deal in streaming today. For over 26% off CuriosityStream, less than $15 a year, a buck and a quarter a month, and Nebula bundled in for free, just click the button on the screen or go to curiositystream.com slash Renee and then go watch my studio tour. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for much, much more on everything Apple has coming our way in 2022. So hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.